What's up everybody, Jason from Jason's Exotic Reptiles. It's been a long time since I've done a video for you guys. I say this every time I make a video, but here it is. It's probably been four months. I'm gonna do a Burmese Python egg cutting video today. We're gonna go through each egg. I saw one of them just pipped, which is just cut the egg open, and let's get into it. Let's cut some eggs open. So this video here, the, the, the pairing that I did was a leucistic Burmese Python that's 100% het for albino and 100% het for labyrinth with an albino that's 100% het for granite. So these are gonna be really cool babies. If you guys are looking for some Burmese pythons, let me know, these, these will be available in like a month. Another video that I'm working on doing is a baby video. I'm gonna take you through every baby I produce just to show you what came out. This is obviously gonna be as of the date we make the video, but let's get right into this video here. As you can see here, we have a couple Burmese pythons that have already pipped. This is what you call pipping when the snake uses its egg tooth to cut the egg, like this guy here. This is the one that I saw in the incubator earlier today, and I already took a look. This is a pearl Burmese python, which is a hypomelanistic albino. We'll see if we can pop it out. I don't know if you can take a look at that on the colors on the camera, but man, this is like lavender and purple and it's just a, a beautiful snake. Well, so we'll kind of keep going through these eggs. We're gonna cut them and we're gonna see what actually pops out. Look how cute that is. This is just kind of his tongue just flip, flicking and just figuring out what the world is right now. So how I like to do this, some people use scissors. I just use a razor blade like this. Come, come closer. Uh, how I like to do this is I just take the razor blade. This one's already pipped, so we're gonna start here. If I just push, his, his, his mouth will actually be right there, but I just use a sharp razor blade and I just cut it. Let's see what we can get here. And then once I get a little slit in, I either use the razor blade to complete it or I will just tear the egg myself. So this is a hypomelanistic Burmese python. See the difference between this Burmese and this one here? Obviously one of them is albino, but that's the, that's the deciding factor. Once we pull all these eggs open, we'll get a better look of what a pearl looks like versus an albino versus a hypo. And everything in this should be, uh, it, because it was a leucistic parent, which is a super hypo, everything should be at least hypo. We'll hopefully get some uh, pearls and hopefully we'll get some, uh, actually this should, this should all be, now that I'm thinking about this, this should all be pearls and potentially some granite stuff, we'll see. Kind of keep cutting. Pearls and hypos. So this is a good example. This one has not pipped yet. I just like to pinch the egg, use the razor blade, and just cut. Just real gently. You're not gonna hurt the snake as long as you pinch it. And the snake, for the most part, is gonna be on the bottom portion of the egg. So let's see what we got in this guy. If anybody has any guesses, well, I guess this will be cheating. This is if we were gonna do live. Any guesses of what we had in terms of final counts, uh, that would be cool. But I guess you could guess males versus females. This is not going to be uh, temperature dependent like alligator eggs, which are temperature dependent, will determine the sex of the babies. These are just truly, uh, they're gonna be males and females mixed in. So we have two hypos, one pearl. Let me get this egg open a little bit more just so we can take a better look. I like to cut a, like a little window here and that's just make somewhat of a, a U shape in the egg. That way I can pull the flap back. Something I do like to do, which is kind of cool, is once they come out of their eggs, I like to wash the eggs out, and then I'll either give them away at reptile shows, and I think kids kind of like that. So, and at this point, it's very important when you pull the eggs to not keep them, or to keep them upright and in the same position when you pull them. Uh, it's really important at that point when they're laid, but once they are about to hatch, you can spin them in every which direction. What you're seeing, reason for that, is that there's blood vessels on the walls of the egg. And after the first, I'll just say 24 hours or so, uh, they have adhered to the side. And if you spin the egg, it'll kind of damage these blood vessels and it could kill the egg that's inside. There's another pearl. Really pretty looking. And all these eggs, you can tell just by, by how they are. Look at this one, she just got his head popped out. It's kind of cool. We'll just finish that U that it, it was making. And the eggs are kind of, they're, they're leathery, leathery feeling. Uh, they're, they're not like a chicken egg. To some of you guys watching, you probably know this already. And we're not gonna do what you might see on Instagram and other people, a lot of times I won't even cut the eggs, but I wanna make sure they all come out. And I thought this was a cool transition into a new video. 
So there's there's that Pearl Burmese python well, that went inside. It's got the, the red, there it is, the red albino eyes, really, really pretty looking. But what you see on Instagram and some of these YouTubers is they'll just pull the baby right out of the egg. You really don't wanna do that. You need to let the baby come out on its own. And where there's multiple ones that have pipped, I don't do a day count on these. I just wait for one or two to pip and that's when I'll start cutting the eggs. I would never cut at a certain date. I've done that in the past, unless it's way past where they should be, then I might do an exploration cut. There's another pearl in there. Uh, but I, I always let them pip, at least a couple of them pip on their own. I think that's important based on the temperature of my incubator and just other factors when the eggs were actually laid. It could be uh, a matter of you know four days, five days to a week, maybe even a week and a half towards when they're actually ready to come out versus that date that you thought. So I find too many people are in a rush to cut the eggs and see what they have inside. In this instance, we know what we have. We have pearls and hypos because that was our pairing. It would be cool if there was something hidden in there and which is always possible. I mean, there's been so many possible hats going around. It's always possible that you're gonna get something unique. So it's always special, but don't rush the process. Let, let the eggs do their thing. And then once they start to pip, then you know they're, they're ready to come out. You can see this one even on this side had a slice before I even made this slice in here. Another thing that's a factor is my eggs towards the back of the incubator. Uh, so when this egg box was in the incubator, this was the front, this was the back. My eggs towards the back of the incubator, which was where my heat panel is and my heat tape, may have incubated a little faster. But again, at that point, once they start to pip, they're all pretty close. So I'm not too concerned with that. Let's keep cutting. And I, again, everybody who's been waiting on these videos, it's just uh, been a little hectic with the move and I've been having a fantastic season this year. So I wanna make up for that by making some pretty cool videos. And one of that is gonna be to show off some of the awesome stuff that we've made this year. Really, really cool stuff with boas. I made a litter of ivory and hypo Burmese pythons. I was hoping to make some blizzards, but I don't know if that girl is, is gonna go. If she does, it'd be a little bit late in the season now. It's about July. These, these eggs were born, or these eggs were laid. I had one clutch in April, one clutch in March. I'm sorry, in May. So these are the May clutch, and just, I'm happy. I really like pearls. They're one of my favorite Burmese python morphs. Hypo is definitely my favorite. Uh, pearls are up there because now you have albino, which is an awesome morph, mixed in with, mixed in with hypo. And they just give, it's a hypo and it's an albino, but it has a softer glow. Now see, this one has a little bit of fluid in there. I'm probably just gonna just squeeze it out. I know it's kind of nasty, but I'm just gonna squeeze it out because I don't want it to drown in the egg fluid. And it'll be perfectly fine now that I did that. And we'll keep going. We have, how many eggs do we have? We had two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 17, 17 eggs. I think this one had actually 18 eggs. One of them went bad in the incubation process. One thing I've struggled with for years is the condensation on the top of the incubator. It's really just a matter of this being wet substrate. This is vermiculite, I'm sorry, this is perlite. This isn't hatchrite. I just go to the garden center. That's a cool looking pattern there. I don't know if you can take, if you can see that, mm. but I always like that stuff. Uh, so I just go to the garden center at Lowe's or Home Depot, and sometimes I'll do a mix of vermiculite, perlite, but in this instance, I just used perlite this year, or whatever it's called, I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. Uh, but the white stuff, I don't spend the money on the hatch right. I don't think there's a need for it. Another pearl, let's get his head buried or her head buried way in the bottom. And in the next couple days, all of these will be out. After that, they will begin a shed cycle uh, about a week to 10 days after they hatch out of this egg, they'll start to shed. They usually all shed within a couple days of each other. That's another pretty hypo. And where these are head albino, I find head albino really brings in some cool looking colors for that. So uh, they'll, they'll go into that shed cycle and then they will eat. Baby Burmese pythons can be, they can be really difficult to get to eat. Uh, so it's, it's kind of, I've heard mixed opinions. Some people say Burmese pythons are amazing. 
and I've had the opposite experience. I think Burmese pythons can be a real pain to get eating, especially, you know, there's always that two or three that are, are very difficult to get eating in my opinion. So you see all these blood vessels on the side of the wall. That's where I was talking about earlier. That's why you do not want to rotate the egg a couple days in, but at this point you can rotate this all around if you want. It's not gonna hurt the baby. And this is the last egg, we'll see. If it's a pearl or a hypo, then we'll get a final count on this. Feels like a little water balloon. Let's see, we have, that is a hypo. But I think we had actually a pretty good even mix. So you saw nothing, no special tools. It's not really uh, rocket science, it's not difficult, but let's get a final count. This is a really pretty looking pearl, kind of a high white. I saw a post on Facebook the other day talking about high white albinos versus low white albinos. And it's, I don't think it's anything genetic, but my personal preference, I like the high white. I think they're super cool and unique. And uh, I don't know, it's, it's kind of unique. So this is a high white versus, let's see if we can get a, I guess we'll call it a low white or a high yellow. This is a pretty cool looking hypo, just a really pretty. This is a hypo that's not a pearl, at least as far as I can see. It's either a really light hypo underdeveloped, these will start coloring up after their first shed, or it is a really dark pearl. So let's take a final count on these and see if I can rearrange them. This guy's cool because he just wants to come out. He's going to be the first one out. So we have one, two pearls. There's a hypo. Let's, just, let's count the pearls because I'm going to lose track. I'm not good at this. So three pearls. Oh, I didn't cut this one. I lied. This is the last egg. Those of you watching are probably like, he, he skipped one. And it, it's, uh, I, again, I've been real busy at work, so it's, I apologize. All right, so the last one we cut was a, was a pearl. Uh, I've been busy at work, so let me know, guys, because it, it's, it's not hard to make these videos, but the process is just time consuming for me with, with everything else I have going on at work. It's just a time consuming process to, to sit down and edit the video. Uh, not that I do a ton of editing. It's, to me, it's just not enjoyable to edit. I don't mind making them. It's the editing that is the pain to me. So what do we got? I'm just rearranging. I'm playing move the eggs around. So we have one, we'll count the pearls. One, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we have ten pearls. Ten pearls and one, two, three, four, seven. five, six, seven hypos. Not bad odds. And that just also goes to show you that uh, genetics don't work like the Punnett squares that you might do. You can always get, I could have got one pearl, I could have got no pearls. I've had I've done het to visual breeding and I've got no visuals and I know that both of them in the past have produced visuals for me. So I know they're definitely hets or, uh, or they are compatible. So it's just kind of luck of the drawer. The drawer we had, I'm pronouncing my R's, I gotta get out of Connecticut. This is crazy. So uh, yeah, we have some cool looking babies. I mean, we'll take one last look at this guy here or girl and in a few weeks, I'd say about a month or so, these will all have been fed a few times and I'll start posting them up on my website. I won't post until they're eating and ready to go, but uh, definitely stay tuned. If you're looking for Burmese pythons, either pearls or hypos with some cool hats in the middle of it, let me know and we'll go from there. All right, guys, until next video, we'll keep it moving. Thank you.